Hello, I'm Patrick Murphy Racy for Dury's Photo in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, what I wanted to do is talk to you today about the Tamron 28-75 E-mount uh, zoom. Uh, this lens is, has already started to ship a little bit. It's really not available widely yet, even if you pre-ordered it, but it's coming. Um, now I've had this lens, I've had this access to this lens for about, um, about three weeks already. And um, before I got a chance to really shoot it a lot, I got an email from Tamron and they explained that there was a, a problem with the, uh, the autofocus um, and that they were going to address this in an upcoming firmware update. As of the recording of this video, they have not done that yet, but I have every confidence that they will do that. Um, there should not be an enormous amount of drama about this. And unfortunately on YouTube, that's what YouTube's about. Um, and so what I want to do is kind of assure you that Tamron's working to fix this. And um, in a very unofficial way, um, Tamron is owned in part by Sony. They're going to figure it out. It's going to work out. So not to worry. Um, so enough of that, on to the lens. What I'm going to do is hit the high points of the lens, the, the parts of the lens that I think are the, the very best value, and then I'm going to address a few pain points at the end. So first and foremost, this lens is f2.8. It is not what's called a floating aperture lens where you start at 28 at 2.8 and then by the time you zoom it to 75 it's now like a f4 or 4.5. This lens remains at 2.8 for the entire um, range of the zoom, which is critical for doing video production and for still photography, because you always know where you're at. Um, it's a really nice way to work to have what's called static aperture lenses. And um, this is a great static aperture 2.8 zoom. It's legitimately fast. I've tested this lens against my own 24 to 70 28 G master lens and the exposure wise it, it stacks up just perfectly sometimes zoom companies and lens manufacturers can fudge factor a little bit on speed a good example of that is the Samyang 8514 it's actually about a 1.6 lens it's not really a 1.4 if you test it against uh, a Canon 1.4 or something else a Zeiss uh, which I did long time ago, I found that the lens was actually a little bit slower. This is legitimately 2.8. Second thing, and maybe the most important thing about any lens, this lens is incredibly sharp. Um, I sh I've shot it, again, like I say, for about three weeks, and I can't find a focal range where it's not sharp. I'm a photojournalist, so I shoot at 2.8 all the time, uh, especially outdoors. I want to knock the backgrounds out of focus, and so I have shot this lens a bunch at 2.8 and it's extremely sharp. It's good in the edges, it's good in the center, it's good in the thirds. It's just a great lens. It's a really, really well-designed lens all the way around. The next thing I want to address is that this is the first lens of many to come and follow. Now, if you kind of pay attention to what's happening in photo retail, you know that Sigma has made enormous inroads for Sony E-mount shooters like myself. Um, first, they came out the MC11, which allows Canon mount Sigma lenses and a bunch of others to work with uh, the A7 series and the A6500s and all that stuff. And that's great. Recently, they've begun to release a bunch of prime lenses in the Art series that have um, extended necks on them and proper E-mounts, which is great. But keep in mind that those lenses were designed for DSLRs. And what they're doing is they're extending the neck of the lens uh, to be able to accommodate the difference in where the sensor is in the mount. So this lens is unique and very special in that Tamron does not make this lens for Canon or Nikon mount. Uh, this lens has been solely designed by Tamron to work on a mirrorless camera, and specifically the Sony. Uh, they've not made any mention so far of making um, this for Fuji or Olympus or anything else. And it would be a waste because nobody has full frame except Sony. And since this is a full frame uh, sensor designed glass lens, it's really unique. And it sort of is, Tamron is making a very important statement here. They're saying, yeah, we're going to make E-mount lenses, but we're going to make them really truly for E-mount, not just re-neck and neck out a bunch of glass that we already make for DSLRs. So I'm really impressed with their move here. 
They are moving slower than Sigma for sure, but they're making the right move, I think, in a lot of ways. And um, I think they're gonna get a lot of sales from this lens. The next thing I want to address is the fact that this lens is not a 24 to 70, it's a 28 to 75. Now, while I appreciate the extra five millimeters on the long end of the zoom, I wondered before I got the lens how much I would miss having the 24 millimeter field of view and everything in between that and 28. And I did great. I carried this lens for virtually three days in New York City last week, and it was with me at all times. I was using a, a Black Rapid strap on the A7 III, and I carried that thing a total. My Fitbit said that I walked 20, 27 miles in three days, and that's all on concrete. That's hard, hard for this old white dude. This is a lot. That's a lot of walking to do. Um, I never had a problem carrying this lens, and um, I know that if I had carried the G Master version of the 2470, it would have hurt because that's a lot of weight to carry. So this lens is really, really a, an excellent lens. Uh, I do not plan to sell my 2470GM as some YouTubers have talked about doing. I plan to keep that lens. Uh, it's a really, really a great lens. Um, but I think I'm gonna also buy this one and use it sometimes when I will, I'll pick and choose what I'm gonna do for the best, you know, best results I need. The other thing I thought about when I was in New York City is I never really missed the 24 millimeter field of view. The 28 was plenty wide for what I wanted to do. In one instance, I backed up about 10 feet and I was able to frame up re really nicely what I wanted to shoot. No big deal. So I think as I get older as a photographer, I'm more interested in the 35 millimeter field of view than even 28. So not having the 24 is not such a big deal. Um, so I didn't really find that I was at a loss much. Um, this lens would also match up extremely well to the, the 12 to 24 millimeter f4 G lens from Sony if you really want to get wide. Um, you could also do this lens, the Zeiss 25 f2, and then the 12 to 24 f4 G. That would be a really nice way to work in wide, uh, wide stuff if you didn't want to. You could also go and do the 16 to 35 28 and then pair this with this. And then you'd have two very lightweight lenses. So all the way around, I think it's a really good thing. The other thing that I like is the form factor affects not just size and weight, but it affects filter size. And the front filter on this lens is a 67 millimeter. If you use filters a lot, like a lot of landscape people do, they're really cheap. I mean, they're a lot less expensive than a 77 millimeter filter. And so um, some people have complained about this, that, oh, all my filters are 77 millimeter, now this won't fit, and I gotta get step down rings, and that's fine, but like, the, um, the reality is that the cost of whatever filtration you want to do at 67 millimeter versus 77 is radically cheaper. So all the way around this lens is less money, which is a good value. The final thing on the good parts about the lens um, is that it's just priced incredibly low. It's just at $799 US, it's really hard to beat. Uh, in its price range, it doesn't compete against anything, really because you could say it's close in price to the 24 to 105 Sigma or the 24 to 105 E-mount uh, G lens, but this is cheaper than both of those, um, and it's a 2.8. Now, it's true it's not a 24, but it's a really, really good lens, and this is almost a third of the price of the 2470 G Master lens. So for many people that are really wanting to get into full frame, trying to bust out of that APS-C thing, or even worse, the Micro Four Thirds, you know, this lens offers this really great, fast, lightweight, small, compact, and inexpensive way to get a true full-frame glass that's really legitimate. Now, for a couple of pain points. I put them in order of most important, all right? So, the first thing that I don't like about this lens is the placement of the zoom ring. Um, they put the zoom ring in front, which is really weird, and the focus ring in back. Um, I dislike that. Every zoom I have is opposite, where I just don't prefer this at all. Uh, I don't like it. And it, it does take some getting used to. When you pick it up, you kind of want to go back here, and then you have to kind of remind yourself to go forwards. I did, after a couple days, got, I did get used to it. Um, but I don't like it, especially when I'm going to mix it with other lenses on the same shoot. So that's, that's kind of a problem. Um, the second thing is there's no 
tension adjustment on the zoom itself. And one of the things I found when I walked around New York City, when I carry the, the uh, Black Rapid, of course the camera's upside down and it hangs like this. And so gravity just basically pulls this thing out and it gets a lot bigger in form factor. And I didn't prefer that. I wish there was a way for me to hit a switch and lock it at 28 and then I could just unlock it when I wanted to shoot it because it would make it much smaller. Minor thing, but it did bother me. There's no hood lock on the lens shade. The lens shade, if you bump it, it's pretty easy to just to come off. Um, the lens shades are not that expensive, but still, I just would prefer to be able to have that thing not come off so easy. It's really easy to pull it off. I didn't lose it once, I have to say, to be honest. I walked a lot of miles, um, but I wish it was there. Um, there is some vignetting uh, on this lens, and not just a 28. Uh, the lens vignettes pretty well uh, throughout its range. Um, if you shoot the sky and close down the aperture and, and just shoot some pictures of underexposed the sky or a white wall, you'll see the corners kind of come in. This is not as big a deal for me as for some people. Um, vignetting is something I add in post-production almost to everything I shoot virtually. So to have a little vignetting just starts me along that process and I don't really care. Secondly, um, Lightroom, um, I'm not sure if they have done it yet, but Capture One and Lightroom and even uh, Photoshop, if they don't have them already, there's gonna be a correction built in so that when you pull the images in in post-production, the, the uh, software will just take the vignetting out, which is very easy to do manually or automatically. So it does vignette a little bit, but man, for the size and weight, I don't care. I'm all good with the vignetting, so it's cool. Um, last, um, there is some AF weirdness. Um, there is some weird things that happen not consistently either. I, I saw it only one time in three days of shooting stills where the kind of autofocus kind of wigged out and I had to turn the camera off and then turn it back on. I didn't have to dismount the lens or anything like that like I used to with the Metabones adapters, but just turn the camera off, turn it back on, it reset and I was able to continue to shoot. I have also not found that the lens doesn't focus really um, well in uh, low light. I, I just, I don't know. I don't have the issue that some people have described. Um, and then last in video, it does have issues with, um, it's not as smooth and organic yet. And Tamron's working on this firmware fix. All in all, pain points included, I think that the 28728 DI3 RXD Tamron lens represents the best value of any wide-angle zoom in E-mount to date. Um, it's just the greatest amount of speed, sharpness, um, size, lack of size, and it's very compact. It's so lightweight. It's easy to carry for days on end. Um, if I was going to Europe and I was gonna take two lenses, this would be one of them, for sure. Um, so I just think this is a really great value, and, I, and I, my hat is off to Tamron to really, truly make a mirrorless lens by an after manufacturer. And um, you know, I think Sigma will get there. Uh, they already make a set of lenses, um, but unfortunately they're only for APS-C. So hopefully this thing will get them moving and get Sigma then into the business of making proper E-mount lenses made specifically for this sensor rather than a DSLR. Um, but anyway, I'm very, very tickled to tell you about this. I will do another review uh, at some point in the future that will include photographs that I've made with a 28 to 75. But right now, man, I, I give this lens the best possible rating I can. Uh, I do think it's the best value for any wide angle zoom for mirrorless at this time. Thanks so much for watching and feel free to contact Duries for more information about purchase or ordering or getting on a list or whatever it is that you need to do. Um, Dury has been around a long time in Nashville and um, they will do you right. Uh, they're, they're there for a long time and they will be there for many years to come, unlike many camera stores. So uh, please don't hesitate to contact Dury's at this number. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Patrick Murphy Racy for Dury's TV.